Hot Tub Factory Outlet is now open in Draper. Don't wait months for your hot tub. Get it now. Enjoy that outdoor deep soaking experience you've been thinking about all year. Whether you have limited space or lots of room, you can have that relaxation you've been wanting today. Shop Utah's newest selection of Viking hot tubs. They're all on display at the beautiful new showroom. Best pricing in Utah and no wait time while supplies last. Hot Tub Factory Outlets at HotTubFactoryOutlets.com. Don't miss BYU Spectacular, October 7th and 8th, featuring Tony Award-winning Broadway star Brian Stokes Mitchell and more. Tickets on sale at BYUtickets.com. BYUtickets.com. This is Religion Today with Martin Tanner, a weekly look at religion and spirituality here at home and around the world. Now, here's your host, Martin Tanner. Welcome. This is Religion Today. I'm your host, Martin Tanner. It has been 20 years since 9-11 happened. The question that many people don't ask themselves or have never bothered to find out is, why did 9-11 happen? Some say the reason is political. The U.S. was not wanted in the Middle East. If that was the reason, the attacks by radical Muslims would have been against U.S. troops in positions in the Middle East, not on U.S. soil. Some say it was motivated by anger against U.S. wealth. That's also wrong. Many of the most militant radical Muslims are very wealthy individuals. For example, Osama bin Laden was from the bin Laden Construction Company family in Saudi Arabia worth billions of dollars. Many other Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and Taliban leaders are very wealthy individuals. Another claim is that U.S. bigotry against Islam resulted in retaliation against the United States. That's really not the reason either. The number of mosques in the U.S., doubled in the first 10 years after 9-11. Muslims are, on the whole, very well treated in the United States compared with many other places in the world. We have Muslims who are members of Congress and who hold political office in many, many places in the United States. They're prominent on radio and television. This is not because of an intolerant U.S. society. So what's the real reason 9-11 happened? If you take a close look at history, you'll find the answer is religion, Islamic belief, the belief amongst radical Muslims who believe that Islam will take over the world inch by inch, mile by mile, country by country. The method is jihad, which means holy struggle. Radical Muslims take literally the verses in the Quran to conquer infidels or non-Muslims, whether they be atheists, Jews, Christians, or of some other religious persuasion. They are, according to the radical Muslim view of the Quran, to convert them to Islam or kill them, or in some cases, tax them in lieu of being killed. This isn't just some general suggestion by the Quran. This is what radical Muslims believe the Quran says. And there are some specific verses about it talking about killing and crucifying or maiming those who do not submit. Let's take a look at Muslim prophecy about the future. How does 9-11 fit in with this worldview. Radical Islam believes it must make the U.S. and the rest of the world Muslim. Thus, 9-11 isn't an anomaly. In the decade before 9-11, there were many prior attempts. There was one with explosives to destroy the World Trade Center itself. There have been many violent radical Islamic attacks in many places in the world, for hundreds of years. This is not 
something new. You may think this is just my opinion. If you'd like to, you can read some of these verses and sources that I will cite from the actual text. If, if you would like, the Quran's available online in a number of different places. You can go to a website called thereligionofpeace.com, which is quite a fascinating website. It's important to actually read in context the verses of the Quran, which are read by radical Muslims, and to see what they think about these particular verses. If you do look at the Quran, the Hadith, and many other sources, make sure you look at the good ones, meaning the ones that are read by radical Muslims themselves. It is important to ask these questions. It's not bigotry. People can ask questions of all religious faiths, whether Jewish, Catholic, Orthodox, Protestant, Mormons, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or whatever particular religion someone is involved in. Truth and information is the most important thing. If you think that radical Islam isn't really that much different from fundamental Christianity, or perhaps ultra-Orthodox Judaism, think again. Let me ask you a few questions. Why are over 99% of religiously motivated terrorist attacks done specifically in the name of only one faith, radical Islam? Why is it that we often hear of converts to radical Islam becoming terrorists, but we don't ever hear of converts to Judaism or Christianity becoming terrorists? Why is it that if a Muslim decides to become a Jew or a Christian, if it's found out in the Middle East, they're killed? Have you ever heard of a Christian or a Jew being killed when it was found out that they left their faith and became a Muslim? No, that never happens. Why are there radical Islam terrorist cells, but no Christian or Jewish terrorist cells. The media often describes individual Muslims who shoot, stab, or run over people with a car as self-radicalized, as if they did this on their own, independent of their religion. Have you ever heard of a self-radicalized Christian or a self-radicalized Jew who stabbed, shot, or ran over someone. You don't. You don't hear this. Radical Islam has been killing infidels, meaning non-Muslims, in the name of Islam for centuries. Other non-Christians, non-Jews, different faiths, assimilate well into Western cultures. You don't ever hear about Buddhist attacks or Hindu attacks or Shinto attacks, or Baha'i, or Confucian, or Sheik, or Taoist, or Zoroastrianist attacks. You, ju you just don't. So let's get to the bottom of radical Islamic doctrine and beliefs that lead to these kinds of terrorist attacks. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So let's take a look at exactly what the Quran itself says about these issues, about how Muslims are to act vis-a-vis -vis non Muslims, meaning infidels. The Quran has, by my count, about a hundred and nine verses which are interpreted by radical Islam is advocating violence against infidels, meaning all non-Muslims, meaning Christians and Jews. In the Quran, chapters are called surahs, and a verse is an ayah. So here are a few of the 109 verses or ayat from the Noble Quran translation, which is the one most often read in English by English-speaking Muslims. Now, before we jump into those verses and actually read them, if you have 
a question or comment about this program or any other program, I welcome your contact. Send me an email to martinstanner at gmail.com, martinstanner at gmail.com, and I will be happy to respond and provide you with whatever information I can. When we come back from our break, the verses from the Quran, which describe how radical Muslims, at least how radical Muslims see these verses, as telling them to uh, act vis-a-vis infidels or non-Muslims. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Religion Today with Martin Tanner continues on KSL News Radio 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. We're back. I'm Martin Tanner. This is Religion Today. 20 years after 9 11, we're exploring the question of why did 9 11 take place? The specific answer is because of religion, because of specific interpretations of the Quran and about other statements from Muslim leaders, not because of the West or its influence in the Middle East or other kinds of um, reasons that you may have heard of. All right, to the Quran. Quran chapter 2, starting in verse 191, quote, and kill them, the infidels, wherever you find them. And al-fitna, meaning disbelief of Islam, is worse than murder. But if they, meaning the infidels, desist, then lo, Allah is forgiving and merciful. Fight them until there is no more disbelief in them, and their worship is for Allah alone. Close quote. Here's another one. Quran chapter 2, verse 216. Fighting is prescribed for you, and ye dislike it. But it is possible that ye dislike a thing which is good for you. Close quote. Quran, chapter 2, verse 244. Quote, Then fight in the cause of Allah, and know that Allah heareth and knoweth all things. Close quote. Quran, chapter 3, verse 56. Quote, As to those who reject the Muslim faith, I... Allah will punish them with terrible agony in this world and in the hereafter, nor will they have anyone to help. Close quote. Quran chapter 3, verse 151. Soon shall we cast terror into the hearts of the non-Muslims, the unbelievers, for they that joined companions with Allah for which he had sent no authority, close quote. Quran chapter 4, verse 74, quote, Let those fight in the way of Allah who sell the life of this world for the other. Whoso fighteth in the way of Allah, be he slain or be he victorious. On him, we, meaning God, shall bestow a vast reward. The martyrs of Islam are unlike the early Christians who were led meekly to the slaughter. These Muslims are killed in battle as they attempt to inflict death and destruction for the cause of Allah. This is the theological basis for today's suicide bombers. Quran chapter 4, verse 74. That's it. Here's another verse. Quran chapter 4, verse 76. Or Yes, this is 76. The early one was 74. Quote, those who believe fight in the cause of Allah. Close quote. Quran chapter 4, verse 89. This is quite a telling one. Quote, but take not friends from the ranks of infidels until they free, flee from their unbelief to the way of Allah. But if they become renegades from Allah, then seize them and slay them wherever ye find them. And in any case, take no friends or helpers from the ranks of 
non-Muslims, close quote. Quran chapter 4, verse 95, not equal are those believers in Allah who sit at home and receive no hurt, and those who strive and fight in the cause of Allah with their goods and persons. Allah hath granted a grade higher to those who strive and fight than to those who sit at home, close quote. In other words, Quran chapter 4, verse 95, admonishes Muslims to fight the infidels, to fight the non-believers. Why? Because, because all are eventually to be converted or swept off the earth, either because they are killed or the Muslim Messiah is to come. Now, one of the things that is often sadly misbelieved or misunderstood about ISIS, about the Taliban, about al-Qaeda, is that they are just a group of ragtags, not well-educated, and they're acting uh, in sort of irrational ways. They are not. There are specific Islamic prophecies about how Islam will expand in the Middle East and how it will eventually take over the world. If you take a look at the places that have been taken over in the past 15 or 20 years by al-Qaeda, by ISIS and the Taliban, you will find that they equate exactly with the prophecies of ancient Islam about how Islam will expand and what territory it will take. From there, you can also see something else that's very important, which is after this territory is taken, it is believed and prophesied in ancient Islam that there will be a great final battle between the armies of Allah, those who are good, the good Muslims, and those who are evil at Rome. Hint, hint, this is a reference to those evil Christians. And what is to happen is that eventually there will be a final battle. This looks a little bit like Armageddon in Christian theology. But in this Muslim view of things, especially amongst radical Muslim adherents, the belief is that there will be this final battle outside of or close to Rome where the armies of Islam are trying to take over the evil empire of, of the Christians. And as it looks like the Muslims are about to be defeated, the Messiah, the Messiah of Islam, will come and destroy all of the evil Christians and non-believers. And at that point in time, Islam will spread throughout the world. And finally, the world will become peaceful because it will be completely Muslim. Now, those are the underlying reasons why self-radicalized, as they are described, Muslims do what they do. They're trying to kill infidels and make Westerners fear so that they will eventually become Muslims. There are a number of signs, according to Islamic belief, that will happen in the short term before the coming of the Messiah in Islamic belief. There will be a number of people who will reject Islam. The knowledge and prevalence of religions that don't believe Islam will spread, and they believe that this has happened in the West. And then what will happen is that there will be a formation of Jews and Christians and others against Islam which they also believe has happened. And from there, Islam will have a resurgence. 
and it will spread and push forward in many different places in the world until the time of that final battle that I have mentioned. These are the underlying beliefs that result in the actions of the Taliban, of ISIS, of many, many others, and occupation by the U.S., U.S. voting and free rights are not going to change those religious beliefs. They are very ingrained and deeply held by radical Muslims. Join me again next week. I'm Martin Tanner. This is Religion Today.